this is a good moment to rethink your customer strategy in terms of digital experience. Um, I don't need to tell you how we've seen the big digital jump forward in the last couple of months. Uh, it's almost like we stepped into a digital time machine. McKinsey made the calculation. They said that we jumped into the future by seven years. And it would be strange if we make such a big digital jump forward that the strategy of digital, and, and more in particular, the strategy that we use for our customer experience wouldn't change as well. And I think we're at a very interesting moment where we see new, a new type of digital experience that rise. Uh, if, if you look to what was important in the past 10 years, it was mainly about being convenient. It was mainly an individual experience. I mean, when I did some online shopping, it was me, myself, and I. It wasn't a shared experience. It was individual. And the internet was a library with all the content in the world. And it, it still is, of course. If you look to the pillars of the next digital experiences, they will be more entertaining, more creative. They will become shared experiences, and they will become live experiences. Th this doesn't mean that the things of the past decade are irrelevant. It just means that the items that made you successful in the past 10 years in digital are now a minimum demand. And the changes and the opportunities are found in these new elements. Uh, if you look at the future of e-commerce, like in China, live shopping, for instance, is already huge. Last year, Taobao from Alibaba had a revenue of more than 60 billion US dollars with live shopping. And live shopping is more entertaining than going on a website and search and click. It's a shared experience. You can do it together with your friends. And it's a live experience. It's actually happening, and you're part of that show. Uh, or look at Peloton bikes. I mean, Peloton bikes are the alternative for the gym. You find your personal trainer, you have a live session, you have a leaderboard where you see who else is online, and that all from the comfort of your own home. So Peloton bike is like the digital working out our alternative for going to the gym, built on these new digital pillars for the next uh, couple of years. Or take Clubhouse. I mean, Clubhouse is one of the new social networks out there that is pretty popular. But it's more entertaining, it's more creative, it is definitely a shared experience, and it's always live. But next to this, what really fascinates me is the impact of what I call branded economies on the world of customer experience. Now, I, I don't need to explain you guys what NFTs are, uh, non-fungible tokens. There are more than enough presentations and videos out there that explain that to you. But what I find interesting is to see what the impact of non-fungible tokens can be on the world of customer engagement. And then my conclusion is that if you look in a world where you have a lot of fans, where there's a community that you have among your customers, that if you're in such a context, NFTs can play a vital role. Uh, the world of sports, where your customers put tattoos on their body, of your brand, where they, where they talk about you in the we form, they're part of that culture, like in the sport environment, like soccer, basketball, there it's obvious that you can sell digital assets to your customers. Uh, but also the same goes for the music industry, where you see that the new album of Kings of Leon offers some NFTs to clients with some additional perks. It's almost a smart contract that you sell. If you buy our new album and you become the digital owner of this particular song, we're going to grant you access to the first rows in our concerts. It's like a smart contract that you give towards your clients. Branded economies. More than NFTs, I think that branded coins will play a vital role there. Where big brands, brands that have strong fans, where content creators, where influencers, will have their own coin. Uh, and again, this is starting to rise in the world of sports. Like this company here is an expert in making personal coins in the soccer industry. Like brands like Paris Saint-Germain, like AC Milan, they have their own branded coin and they create their own economy. Uh, myself, I was part of this experiment by Rally.io. Rally.io is a platform where you can create your own coin as an individual or as a brand. So I created the CXM coin, the Customer Experience Management coin. And you can go to Rally.io and you can actually get yourself a coin. 
Uh, and then you can ask yourself, okay, Stephen, what are you going to do with that coin? The honest answer is I'm not 100% sure yet, but I have this model in the back of my mind that if you like my content and imagine that you share my videos or you comment on my Instagram posts or you share my LinkedIn messages, the moment that you do that, I would like to have a system that I can automatically reward you with one of those coins. So you share, for instance, this video on Twitter, then automatically you receive one CXM coin. It has some sort of a financial value. If more people share my content, the value of that coin goes up. So you contribute to the success of my content. And then maybe when a new book comes out in a couple of months or in a couple of years, you can use the coins that you earn to share my content to get a free book. Maybe that will be my model. Uh, but that's just me. I'm just a small, tiny player in this field. Just imagine what the opportunities are for big brands, especially those love brands. Uh, maybe if you become part of the community of Nike, you get specific Nike coins, and you can then use those coins to get an exclusive shoe. Or if you're a Disney fan, you talk a lot about Disney, you get rewarded with those coins, or you buy those coins, and you get early access to a video. Maybe you can have autographed books by famous authors. But at the end of the day, it's probably not, not just going to be those huge brands. I think that every brand that you know, creates some sort of community among their customers has the potential to create their own branded economy. And then here's some more generic examples. Maybe you can get an entry ticket for a premium customer uh, for a specific event. Maybe you can ha use your coins to fast track yourself in, in, um, in service. Maybe it's a way that small entrepreneurs organize an event and then people pay in coins. So there are many, many opportunities. But basically what you're seeing is that this goes beyond the traditional loyalty system. And the tra traditional loyalty system tells you if you buy 10 breads from us, the 11th one is for free. In a branded economy, you get a coin that is not specifically linked to one application or one benefit. Plus, if that brand does well, the value of your coin is increasing and you as a customer are benefiting from the success of the company that you're dealing with. That's why it's not just a branded loyalty program, but that's why it's a branded economy. And this may sound far off for many of you, but it's part of the decentralization of power that we're going to see in the next couple of years on the internet. Huh? Because the next 10 years, the, the last 10 years, sorry, the last 10 years were characterized by a strong centralized economy. We had a handful of very strong players that determined everything that happened on the internet. But that is under pressure right now. Uh, if you look at the new iOS that Apple launched, it's a direct attack on the business model of Facebook. And they launched it mid-May. 2021, and the first statistics showed that only 4% of the US population is still allowing companies to track their behavior between apps and websites. So 96% said, I don't want to be tracked anymore between apps and websites. That's a direct attack on the, let's say, traditional online advertising model. But the same thing was, was very interesting to follow, you know, the, the, this battle between Facebook and um, and the Australian government and the Australian media. At a certain moment, the Australian media said, hey, Facebook, you're sharing our content from our journalists, our publishers, and you're not paying for that. Facebook said, yeah, but you're getting traffic because of us. It's a win-win. Australia said, no, no, from now on, you will have to pay Facebook. And Facebook became very angry, and they said, no, no, law, no more content will be shared on our platform from Australian publishers. That took about a week, and at the end of the day, the conclusion was that Facebook will pay the publishers in Australia. We have a lot of centralization out there. I'm convinced that if we look back in 2030, that those companies will still be very powerful, but the power will be spread out more equally because of the new potential that we have. And the whole idea of branded economies will play a role in the decentralization of power because every brand, every company will have the potential to create their own branded community where you have the rules of an economy that will play there. And it offers us the potential to engage with our customers in a different way. And, and it's all part of the big digital jump forward. Uh, it's all part of the time machine. I think my conclusion of the last 15, 18 months is that in terms of digital behavior, we didn't climb the Matterhorn. We didn't went steep up to go steep down again. We had such a rise in behavior, but it's not going to go down again. What happened is that we climbed the Table Mountain. We went steep up and we reached this new plateau. 
And on top of this new plateau, a new digital era, new digital opportunities are taking place and are, are being built and are being discovered. And if you want to look to the future of digital customer experience and you want to grab those opportunities, I would invite you to look at the opportunities that the elements on the right-hand side of this slide will bring to you. The future of digital experiences to win the heart and the business of your customers will be more entertaining, there will be more shared experiences, it will be more and more live, and you will find new ways to engage with your customers, and the branded economies will play a vital role there. So I hope this inspired you to look differently to your customer strategy, to look to your digital customer strategy. If you liked this presentation, please like it, please share it with your friends and family. Follow me here, follow me on Instagram, and let me know what you think in the comments. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching.